Hi, I wish I could be there with you in Strasbourg to share in the excitement of the uh, preparation for the introduction of the Saab 9000 in Europe. In the United States, we have to wait for the 9000 introduction until the 1986 model year. In the meantime, things are going very well here in America with the 900 models. Let me uh, review with you our sales development over recent years. In 1980, we sold 13,000 cars. In 1981, 14,500. In 1982, 18,200. 1983, 25,800. And for 1984, we are projecting sales of 32,000 cars. There are, of course, uh, many contributing factors to our uh, sales progress in the United States. We have a good car, we have a good competitive car. However, the biggest contributor to our progress in America is, of course, the Saab dealer. In 1980, we put uh, together a program that we called the Saab Dealer Development Program. What this uh, dealer development plan is all about is that it is a complete review of a dealership operation. We gave this to our dealers and we asked them to sit down with their managers and review each department in the dealership. If there were out of line situations, we wanted them to uh, mark those and those were to be discussed with the representatives of Subscania of America in subsequent meetings. Our field force also did the same thing for each individual dealer and uh, at the meetings, subsequent meetings, a comparison was then done on how the dealer saw his operation and how we saw his operation. We also established uh, yearly objectives in car sales, parts and accessory sales, and labor sales. The key in establishing these objectives was that they were realistic objectives. We didn't want any dream numbers. And above all, that they were mutually agreed on between us and the dealers as doable. I credit a large portion of our progress to this close cooperation with our dealers that uh, was made possible through this dealer development plan. For 1984 and 1985 in our dealer development plan, we are concentrating on upgrading dealership facilities. Like you, we are competing head-on with BMW, Mercedes, Audi, Volvo, and Peugeot. It is imperative that our Saab dealers are in facilities that reflect the upscale product that they are selling to a very discriminating buyer. We cannot be inferior to uh, our competition when it comes to facilities. You should know that the dealer makes the investment in the dealership himself. I would li now like to uh, show you some of the uh, typical Saab dealerships in the United States. This is uh, an exclusive uh, Saab leadership selling about uh, 180 cars. The building you're looking at is where he started uh, 25 years ago. He had a one car showroom and uh, two service stalls. This is uh, how that leadership looks today. The building you saw on the first slide is over in the right hand corner. He has acquired additional land and built a showroom for Saab, which uh, as you see, looks very attractive. When we go into a leadership like this, we want uh, a separate showroom for Saab, which you see here, very attractive. We also want uh, separate uh, facilities for Saab service and also for Saab spare parts. Here you see uh, a uh, Saab leadership dueled with the uh, Mercedes-Benz. The same philosophy goes through here. We want uh, separate showroom for Saab and as you can see, it is uh, a very attractive display of Saab automobiles. This is uh, a Saab dealership uh, on Manhattan in New York. We have our own section in the showroom. The cars are uh, very nicely displayed. We are pushing very hard for the dealers to have uh, the boutiques where they sell uh, accessories, and that has been a very successful, successful program for our Saab dealers in this country. They're making a lot of additional money on that. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Ray Van Doren. Mr. Van Doren, a couple of months ago, opened up his new exclusive Saab leadership with an investment of close to one and a half million dollars. This is our new facility. 
and a long-time dream in contemporary design to complement the advanced technology of the Saab automobile. The interior consists of marble floors, crystal chandeliers, black ceilings, to make it comfortable for both our customers and our employees. A question which might come to mind is why I would commit to such a substantial investment in the Saab franchise. Due to the tremendous improvement in quality, engineering, and product acceptance in the United States, I have generated large profits and created demand that exceeded my new car inventory. On a service point of view, the Saab accessory program, dedicated delivery, and a demand for customer satisfaction has more than improved my parts and service profits. In my opinion, part of sustaining Saab's success is an intelligent, knowledgeable, and personable sales force in each showroom. We at Ramsey Saab are willing to maintain our customer satisfaction, high volume of sales, and hopefully we can be a good example to Saab Scania of what a Saab dealership could be. On behalf of the Saab dealers of the United States, I would like to take this opportunity to wish you a successful launch of the new Saab 9000. We are anxiously awaiting the arrival of the new addition in the United States to further enhance our franchise in the 1986 model year.